The very first transit map is often said to be the London Tube Map of 1933. But let's go further back. What was the very first map to take an area and rather than trying to show it accurately, show it in the most readable fashion to understand how to travel, whether it's for trains or in our case, horses? The very oldest detailed transit map that we still have a copy of goes all the way back to showing the Roman Empire. And the big question is, why does it exist? And can I even call it a transit map? Yeah, you can. Okay. That's Professor Richard Talbert, who spent 10 years dedicated to studying this map and was nice enough to talk with me in the process of making this piece. The map, called the Poitinger map, or Tabula Poitingeriana, is 13 inches tall and 22 feet across. But look, I mean, this thing is a daft shape. If you're going to make a, a nice big map of the ancient world, are you going to make it 25 feet long? Or more than that? And one foot tall? That's loony. Who's going to want that? It's crazy. What are you going to do that for? To give you a sense, each of these are cities. These are the roads. These are the distances each road will take. And these are the stops along the way. It spans from Spain to India, the whole Roman Empire at its height, showing mountains and rivers and completely squishes the waterways. Here's the entire map. Let me stretch it out, expand the water, adjust Italy, Greece, and Turkey so they're pointing the right way, and there you go. That's what it's showing. Going by the Poitinger map, if someone wanted to travel from Rome to Constantinople, for instance, this is the path. But people didn't travel just by roads. For long distances, you'd go by sea. Rome to Constantinople would look like this, as ships were much faster. Links for both of these incredible data visualizations and the people who made them, below. But for centuries, people studying the map assumed it was primarily a guide for traveling from one location to another. Mostly people named Conrad, who weren't shy about making some wonderful copies of the original. Yes, I did just make a Von Scheib pun that no one will get, and well, sirs and madams, I am okay with that. I am proud of that. Even today, many major scholars consider it primarily valuable as a route map. I think it's mistaken to take this at face value. It isn't just a route map. That's not the primary agenda. The primary agenda is what? As a map to either understand the layout of the world or to travel by, this thing is ridiculous. You're going to put Rome in the middle, which is, that's controversial, but that's what I think. You know, that's like, that's like saying, well, let's make a map of North America, but we must have Las Vegas, Nevada as center point. Geographically, cartographically, that's going to wreck the thing. And you want you want this to be used by by drivers, by road users? Man, this is going to drive them all nuts. So, you know, why? What's this about? What, why is it like this? Even the cities on it never existed at the same time. Pompeii was destroyed in 79, while Francia didn't come into existence until the 400s. The creators were likely pulling information from expeditions done hundreds of years apart, with some of the places referenced near inaccessible to Romans at that time. So again, why does this exist? It almost definitely wasn't for military reasons, as it doesn't show strategic points like mountain outposts or river crossings. And it's unlikely it was made as a historical document years after Rome existed, as it doesn't highlight Christianity in any major way. It barely even shows Jerusalem. So many believe that the original version of the map was made before the spread of Christianity. Let's be clear. The first version that we still have a copy of is from the 1200s. But that document is clearly a copy of a copy of a copy of a much, much older map. Maps were constantly getting copied. So in trying to get to the root of why was this made, part of the answer comes from figuring out when was the very first version created. Let me share Professor Talbert's take with a caveat that we're entering the world of speculation incredibly researched speculation. It was not made for transportation, or for military movement, or even for historical records. Rather, it was made to brag. It was made for political reasons all the way back in the time of the Roman Empire, possibly the 400s, possibly even the 300s or earlier, with some of the cities we now see on it getting added later. It said, Look how big the Roman Empire is. It is the entire world, with Rome at the center. And you, citizen, are a small part of it. 
Professor Talbert imagined it displayed in a throne room behind a king. This, of course, is a reconstruction of what that might have felt like. When you look up, you see behind him this world map. And of course, you're supposed to make the connection. Whoa, this guy is world class. He's not just the king of some piddly little offshore island or even just part of that, but he's an international figure on the world stage. And, you know, it's not, it's not a very sophisticated message, but I think it, it could impress the locals. It said, here's what's important and here's what's not. Because that's what maps do. They point you to the information they believe you should care about. In looking at the history of maps, one way to view them is the evolution of cartographic accomplishments, the pooled knowledge of the many, many explorers. But not all maps are created equal, and the other piece that comes into play isn't accuracy, but rather intentional inaccuracies. Because how those shape up show how the benefactors of the map wish for the world to be seen. For in shaping how someone sees the world, you shape how they see their role in it, how they see themselves. Inevitably, when you study the past, a lot of it has to be speculation, and the point can come where, really, the, the, there becomes a serious disproportion of speculation and actual evidence. I, I do like evidence. And if I've stirred up a few and created a few, uh, bruised a few egos, well, I'm sorry, but you know, it's, I think this is, this is what we should be doing. Thank you to Professor Richard Talbert and also Ali Reza Kunani for taking the time to talk with me in the process of creating this piece. If you'd like to learn more, I've included links below to both go deeper into the research and some fun data visualizations you can play around with. Thank you for watching.